Health is the most precious resource for everyone on the planet. Healthy time is something that you cannot easily buy, no matter how rich you are. Think about adding 10 healthy years to everyone's life on average. So that would mean 80 billion healthy life years and hundreds of billions of healthy life years over many generations. Think about the net present value of quality adjusted life years if you are thinking about that over generations, we're talking about trillions of healthy life years. We are going after age-related diseases, but to understand the fundamental human biology, we all work together to understand uh, aging. And now we're uh, putting this experience into AI and helping accelerate this progress towards healthy, productive longevity. Well, I think uh, healthcare is undergoing a very important transformation, which is the digitization. And the digitization spans from uh, radiology, pathology, uh, healthcare records, insurance records, uh, wearable devices, genomics. So a lot more information is being fed and stored in digital format. You might wonder why computers and biology? I mean, certainly. And the reason is that biology is full of information in the same way that a bank is full of information. Sometimes I look out of the window, and if I could see a cell, even a tiny piece of the cell would be as complicated as Shanghai. Uh, it turned out that uh, deep learning, so deep neural networks, are best trained on very rich and high content and high quantity longitudinal data. So we started training deep neural networks on human age first, using multiple data types, primarily uh, data types like gene expression and protein expression. By doing that, you train deep neural networks to learn basic human biology. And we figured out how to decipher those deep neural networks, how to deconvolute them into very specific features, into those genes that are most important, put them back into biological context. And one of those biological processes that results in many diseases is fibrosis. So we retrained those deep neural networks on many, many types of fibrosis. So basically, where we looked for dual purpose targets. The whole drug discovery process has becoming less and less efficient. It needs some move to radically revitalize it. On the chemistry side, the probability of finding the, the good hit uh, for a very well known validated target is about 80%. But it costs you, sometimes it can cost you from 10 to 100 million dollars. So, and can take you anywhere from half a year to several years. So what we did, uh, we identified a novel target, novel molecule, went all the way to first in human in about two years. But essentially AI is bringing in as much information as possible and treating the information in a clever, well-balanced way. It's obviously the right way. In a traditional model, you usually uh, start with a bunch of targets. Uh, and you have many shots on goal, you pursue them and uh, uh, by method of elimination, and you might still not find the optimal uh, target for a disease. So we started to explore which areas of uh, bioinformatics can be um, accelerated with deep learning and where we can make the most impact. We developed a few of those um, starting with IPanda algorithm and we built on top of that an IPanda transformed into a tool which are currently used by thousands of users called Pandaomics. 2017 Hotel Coronado in San, in San Diego and I'm presenting on AI for drug to, discovery. Two strategies for AI driven innovation in pharma to ensure that you get better molecules and uh, much faster approvals. So one is looking for a needle in a haystack, and another one is creating a new needle. A year before, in 2016, I published my first research paper showing that we can apply the same technology to generate novel molecules. When I started doing this at Ancilico, actually even some of the biologists that were working for me decided to quit. We need to convince people uh, that AIDD will provide the uh, breakthrough resolution for drug discovery. And also we need to convince ourselves. One of the most classical paradigms is high throughput screening. So you take a large uh, number of molecules in a molecular library and apply them to uh, uh, this protein of interest. And you see which ones 
are binding to that uh, protein of interest or performing some other desired function. Usually you have to screen through hundreds of thousands of molecules to just find one. There are uh, more classical approaches uh, that are called DNA encoded libraries. You look at the structure of the um, protein, uh, try to identify the pockets, and then computationally, uh, but more with physics-based modeling, try to fit the different molecular structures from the libraries again uh, into those pockets to see what binds the best. What Encilico has done, we can take this protein structure, identify the pockets very quickly, and then instead of trying to fit something from the molecular libraries, we generate from scratch the molecules with the desired properties. So AI is imagining many. Uh, that do not exist in the non-chemical space. When we first presented the Chemistry 42 to our medicinal chemistry team, it was very exciting how they launched their first genetic experiment. Uh, they did it completely on their own. Uh, they were very nervous and had to wait 72 hours until the results uh, were out. The medicinal chemistry team started uh, looking into the structures that our models generated and uh, they said like, okay, th this, this structure is good, this one is also good, and it was very exciting that uh, it indeed worked. Originally, uh, we have started as a service company. At some point of time, we understood that this kind of business model is not really well scalable, and uh, uh, at that point of time, we decided to productize uh, all the capabilities that we have. So currently, uh, the technology platform of Insilica consists of three major parts. Those are target discovery and omics research, generative chemistry, and uh, the last but also very important part, that is the prediction of uh, clinical trial outcomes and uh, overall uh, success of the uh, running and potential preclinical and clinical programs. The clinical studies are conducted in phases. Phase one is usually safety. You demonstrate that the molecule is safe. Phase two is efficacy. You show that it works in the disease. And phase, phase three combines both. And at some point in time, we decided to develop our own drugs. And we decided to go into IPF first. We delivered our first PCT program in 2021, uh, and now the program is getting into the uh, phase two clinical trials. This is the first time people use AI to discover novel targets and also discover novel molecule and get into a clinical trial. Once we discover this, uh, this target, uh, we want to find some novel targets that work on the fibrosis. Uh, so our AI team uh, has uh, used a lot of patients' data and comparing those transcribing data with the healthy uh, people's data. And they identified 20, uh, close to 20 novel targets. And TNIC is one of them. And then we use our internal filters for target validation. And we nail down TNIC as the targets we want to pursue. The second step is we use our chemistry 42 to generate novel molecules starting from the structure of this tinic protein. The computer imagine small molecules that can bind to this uh, uh, tinic protein and it gives us uh, uh, hundreds of compounds that by the computer's imagination and our chemists selected from those uh, hundreds of uh, molecules and select 78 and we do the synthesis and testing and uh, within those 78 compounds, we found one molecule. It's our PCC molecule, 055. Now it's in clinical trial. We identified the novel target of a molecule, uh, went all the way to first the human in about two years. Today we're celebrating, right? So let's celebrate first in humans. We are here to make bad. So we make the patient life better and hopefully we make the whole pharmaceutical industry better. We nominated the preclinical candidate in under 16 months. So that is way faster and cheaper than the industry standard. We did it also for about $2.7 million all the way to preclinical candidate for IPI. Our next medication uh, may be designed uh, by artificial intelligence. Biotech firm Insilico Medicine beginning human trials of a drug development uh, by AI. 
So within uh, under four years, we managed to start phase two human clinical trials with our AI-designed, AI-discovered therapeutic targeting fibrosis, but uh, that was possible to uh, purpose into multiple diseases. We used uh, AI to identify a novel target for fibrosis uh, in order to show efficacy and safety in mice, in uh, cells. Then did phase zero human clinical trials in Australia. Then phase one in New Zealand and in China. And now it entered phase two in the US and in China. And human health, I think, is a basic right. Human health should not be an area for rich people. What our goal is to really solve the unmet medical needs uh, for patients, especially for those uh, diseases that with no cure currently. The patients really need the drug, they need some hope. We want to also impact and enable others so the whole industry accelerates because we have thousands of diseases without cure, without any treatment option. We have so many unmet medical needs, uh, but we must do something about it. What Encilico did, we're, we're not only consuming this technology internally, we're also uh, making it available for everybody else on the planet to uh, in license, to buy it reasonably cheaply compared to the cost of developing it from scratch, uh, and uh, using it. So, Every big pharmaceutical company now has the ability to acquire our expertise reasonably cheaply. I'm really hopeful that our work and our uh, progress can help advance this field and can help motivate others to go into this field and contribute. So in some ways what Insilico is doing is speeding up the ability to design better healthcare. And it's doing it in a way which is, again, not by luck, but can be used reproducibly. Once I see more people joining our field based on our achievements, so they realize that they can have a great career and at the same time subscribe to our ideology, that makes me very happy.